I'm starting this video not quite sure how to assemble everything. What you're about to see is kind of a really heavily edited version of my trip uh, three days ago where I followed the hamster ride um, from where I live in central New Hampshire as far as I could go before I ran out of gas. And it was, when I got home that evening, I was shaking, I was miserable, I was freezing, my whole body was sore. I'm still sore today, I can't extend my arm all the way out because my bicep is like just so sore. I've got awful tendonitis, I'm in pain. Uh, my feet have been cold since Saturday, they, they're not getting warm at all. I, it was miserable. And one of the most extreme things I've done in a very long time. But watching all these videos over here, so I've got like... 71 videos and if I were to drop all of them into Final Cut, this is going to break the computer by the way. I just did a select all. <laughs> uh, it's 11 hours and 25 minutes of content. I mean YouTube would accept that file but no one here is going to watch it. Um, I. It's difficult watching the raw files capturing exactly what I experienced from 5 a.m. on Saturday morning to 9 p.m. Saturday night as a solo motorcyclist hitting only dirt roads and uh, falling a lot, crashing a lot, not turning around when he was supposed to, getting stuck in like creeks and mud and like it was insane. There was three parts of this trip where I thought I'm just gonna leave the bike here and walk. <laughs> And that's never happened to me in any situation on foot, behind the wheel, or behind the steering wheel, or the handlebars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do one video, which is just the time lapse from the GoPro, 45,000 photos, trimmed down to like 15 minutes of going from my house to the tip top of New Hampshire. I'm going to put another video out, which is an unedited helmet cam from my TomTom Tom Bandit of the entire route. It's everything. Uh, and you'll get to you'll get to laugh along uh, in total. And I'm going to try to get all the clips there of the bears and the turkey and the deer and the crashing and the uh, and the slip ups and the treachery and talking to locals and like all that stuff. Talking to myself, saying to myself out loud, I think I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> and then there's going to be a third video, which is going to be uh, all the stuff I captured on here on the Linux at Linux and 4K with a bit of the 720p video from the Bandit and a bit of the 2K time-lapse footage from the GoPro as kind of sort of B-roll. I think that's how I'm going to do it. But I had a blast. We're going to cut like right in a second into it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. It was fun. If anyone wants to come to New Hampshire and do this with me, my one regret, biggest regret of all, was doing this by myself. If I had done it with a friend, it wouldn't have been as serene and peaceful and relaxing. I like to get away with myself with my thoughts sometimes and listen to music and just, just relax. But the safety factor of doing it by myself it was pretty stupid. I had one water bottle, one protein bar, two extra gallons of gas, and a first aid kit. And a, and a, and a short wave radio, 10 mile radio. I don't think that would have helped me survive if I had truly had a breakdown or if my bike didn't start after one of these falls. So uh, thank you for watching this in advance. Let's cut over to the vlog style video and then please, if you guys want to, check out the time lapse and the TomTom Tom Bandit footage because it was quite a day of, um, of adventure. <sighs> Hello everyone, it's Friday evening, 10.15 p.m. I have a uh, Kentucky breakfast out a KBS from Founders. Probably not a good beer to be wrapping up the Friday night with. Mm. Uh, if you look over here to my left, you'll see we have a ton of devices that are charging. I now have a second uh, backup battery for my TomTom Tom Bandit TomTom Tom unit, the GoPro. Three batteries are charging. iPhone, iPad, I've got the, um, the Senna and the TomTom Tom fully charged. And I'm editing some video, actually, of today's... Uh, Day's trip. I, I am not a professional video editor. Uh, even though I have Final Cut Pro, all I do is just trim, balance color, add a basic title, and then just 
export to 4K. <laughs> so, before I go to bed, uh, I'm pretty excited. That's Porter. Hi, Porter. I'm pretty excited. So tomorrow, I gotta pull this map up for you guys. This is really exciting. Uh, I'm doing something called the hamster ride. And um, let me give you the intro here to, to what your oh, xhamster.com slash tags slash riding. It's not. <laughs> Hold on. That's not what I was looking for. Sorry, Mom. Um, there we go. Found it. AdventureRider.com, the hamster ride. Um, this guy in 2014 decided to create a route the length of New Hampshire using predominantly dirt roads. Um, so let me show you this this image of what this looks like here. I gotta I gotta pull this up. This is amazing stuff, man. Actually, let me do it on my phone so you can see a little better. I've got to plot it plotted out on my phone. Um, the, it's on version uh, 6.1 now, so that they keep improving it. But here's the here's the hamster ride. Don't get me in the camera, Linux. There we go. So south to north, it's all dirt roads, and you should plan on spinning. Here's a here's a, uh, a rallynavigator.com page as well for it. Um, it's only 165 miles, right, from the south to north. But you got to keep in mind, it's all dirt. So all you can do is go like. 15 miles an hour on average. I mean, best case 40, worst case 2 to 3. Lots of drop in the bike because it's dirty and muddy. It's been raining all week. Lots of gravel, lots of dirt. A few cases where people have bought up land, they put the roadblocks up. If you've seen some of my past uh, uh, motorcycle videos on, on in New Hampshire, there are douchebags that will buy plots of land and they will block off town roads. And because the town never goes to survey them, DOT doesn't maintain them. They just become forgotten about, and then all of a sudden, it's not a road anymore. Uh, there's a few of those where you have to kind of get up, go backtrack, and go around. So the whole thing takes two days. I'm going to get on in Canaan, New Hampshire, and ride up to probably Littleton, New Hampshire. So I'm not going all the way to Canada. I'm probably doing 40% uh, of the route um, in a full day. Now, if I have a great time, I'm bringing my tent with me. Uh, I can always camp out in Littleton and then go the rest of the way up to Canada the next day and then take interstates home, maybe. But um, this vlog is going to be me riding the hamster. Um, I have a second. He's crying because Heather's outside and he's, he's codependent. No. There's a secondary motive here, which is I work at TomTom. -tom. And when I added the GPX trail for the hamster ride to my TomTom uh, -tom Rider 400 motorcycle GPS, it is like, cannot route you there. And the reason why is we're missing a couple of segments, like 1% we're missing in our road network and the geo, geo network. Uh, so it couldn't navigate me along the traces, which is, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the TomTom -tom Bandit with this guy here, which has a built-in GPS feature. So this will be uh, mounted in my helmet. I've got two batteries, 256 gigabyte uh, SD card. It'll run all day. Um, I've also got a backup uh, cable thing I can use. This will be recording my GPX file and my video so I can convert it over to our mobile mapping uh, system so it can be uploaded directly to our cartographers. I'm also going to use the record function on the TomTom -tom and the record function on the iPhone. So all three of these will get merged together into one uh, GPS trace that our cartographers can pretty much trust because three different devices all kind of agreed this is kind of the route they're like you know they're one to 20 meters off at any given time but when you merge the three together they get like super accurate they will have the video files which will help them uh to do even more more work there i'm super excited to not only help build our map in areas where it's going to benefit riders but also benefit us as a company but spend all day on dirt roads on the gs i'm stoked so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna finish drinking the kbs and, and uh, editing this video, uh, which is my commute to work today. And then I'm going to go to bed and get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and head out. Plus, it also helps the fact that um, Heather has family in town, like a lot of family. And I conveniently decided to do this hamster ride a day before she invited me to spend the whole week with her family, the whole weekend with her family. So she has a perfectly accurate, or sorry, perfectly, um, what's the word for it? not accurate, 
Um, it's, it's, uh, fuck, why am I drawing a blank here? It's a opportunistic memory that I conveniently uh, recommended I would do this. I totally had this idea before she did of fitting help her family, so. Okay, let me finish this and then go to bed. Hampshire ride. Hi, Porter. Good morning. Everyone's asleep around here, but the bike is loaded up. We have the uh, same setup as we did for the uh, road trip, which we have the GoPro up front. Tom Tom on my helmet. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun day. Uh, I'm very excited. All right, so we are on uh, the corner of Route 4 and Switch Road, which for me is my start of the hamster. Right here, if you look back behind us, over there is where the other side would uh, would come out. So, uh, obviously I'm about the halfway point for the hamster, but it's, uh, it's not a bad starting point actually. Fast moving clouds, we've got some, a little bit of rain droplets that came down. I'm going to be running um, the TomTom Tom Bandit as well as the GoPro, and uh, let's get started. This is exciting, guys. Very, very exciting. Get the Bandit fired up and uh, start our adventure. All right, we are uh, town line of Piermont. Found our first uh, summer only road. Wow, a little dicey getting down here. It's gonna get worse. It's definitely gonna get worse. But uh, man, this is just a blast. I wish you guys could be here. This is just amazing. And in New Hampshire, you've got these old rock walls where it used to actually be someone's property line and obviously still is, but these things are no longer needed. Oh, all right, back on it. Yes. Oh, oh. Fucker came out of nowhere.
we made it to Piermont, New Hampshire. That was some fun roads there. Guys, just so you know, on uh, July 8th, there's going to be the Stratford Motor Speedway. There's going to have some, uh, some bog, mud bogging, FYI. Yeah, Piermont. It's, uh, it's warming up a little bit. It's still fucking cold outside, but it's warming up a little bit. Grapes of champions here. Sausage egg and cheese. And ripple. Well, we made it to uh, Warren. There's a rocket ship over there. We've gone uh, 56 miles so far. Things are going good, though. We're back on. Uh, we're back on some uh, dirt roads really, really soon. Really soon. Well, we got to our first blocked road, so supposedly the trail continues up here. There's a waypoint here called, uh, I don't know, but uh, we're connecting to 116. Looks like instead I'm just going to... Um, Keep going to the left and connect up around this way to Ben. I might get out of here and go a little bit further to see if I connect, but uh, but if not, they're going up to Ben. What does this thing say? Let's see. No motor vehicles. U.S. Forestry Service. Huh. What does that say? I'll have to read that later when I'm at home. Well, I guess uh, this is now blocked, FYI. This is supposedly our first class six road, so we are something kiln road and 
Schlafer. So, Sinclair. We're on Sinclair Road. Um, it says not a through street, so we'll have to see how that goes. But supposedly, according to Apple or TomTom Tom maps, uh, it does connect. So, we'll see. Well, that no through street thing was right. It blocked off with tree branches. And we are, uh, <laughs> we're not stuck, but it's gonna be a lot of work to get out of here. All right. Well, we made it to Bath, New Hampshire. If you look here, I've got some uh, pretty dirty pants, which is worrying me only because I'll probably end up scratching up the uh, the side of the fuel tank here, the GS bit. But she is dirty. Jeez. So uh, we are in Bath. We'll keep heading north from here. And then uh, we're actually on a main road for a little while here. But we're gonna head, uh, uh, we'll be on some back roads soon enough, I think. I do this to kind of pre-cache where we're going, so if I lose service, it won't, it won't drop me off the map. We totally skipped the, um, the White Mountain area though. GTI. All right, let's get out of here. All right, I don't know if this video on over here is gonna come through or not, but um, the road on the GPS tracks was supposedly a dead end. And the next road was also a dead end, but that also, it was a dead end, but it was reflected on the maps, on my map, so I did know it was a dead end. So now I'm going kind of a roundabout way, but I'm, I'm supposed to go right down there and kind of take this direction to basically right there. Now I'm taking this road about a mile or so, and then going this way behind that mountain over there and kind of hitting up at the same place. That is the plan. The cows are checking me out over there. See the cows? They're way in the distance. But bike's doing well. These little brakes are nice. Really nice. Beautiful road though. Really, really beautiful. And this is actually a road that, um, there was a sign that said closed to winter travel. So uh, November through May 31st were the dates. So it's June. June 3rd, so <laughs> who knows how good it's going to be. We'll have to see. Just take it easy.
Oh, fucker came out of nowhere. We are at Dodge Pond. So by the way, for those of you doing the hamster, uh, it looks like our last poster who did this route took a wrong turn and then backtracked. So I kind of anticipated that and didn't waste my time on the uh, on the wrong turn there. This focusing on the Lumix is absolute shit. It is absolute shit. So from here on out, we are, looks to be, Running alongside 93. Went in south of for a bit. So it looks like we're doing okay on sort of the map here. So we've got a uh, we've got a dam. There we go. It's crazy to see it though. It's like beautiful. I should probably stop recording for a second. Look at this. Yeah, they got the little balls up. I guess if you don't get any closer than that, you might get stuck right in. That'd be a painful fall to make for sure. Wow. Yeah, this is a gorgeous little pond. It's all coming out over here. Yeah. That's beautiful out here. Oh, we made it to Littleton. I'm going to get some uh, some coffee real quick. But uh, yeah, turn the GoPro off. No one's gonna steal it here. It's it's New Hampshire. In my wallet. This thing is filthy, 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 filthy. There's the wallet. Yeah, this used to be a full coffee shop, and they've kind of rebranded or something. Again, not really sure where I am, Martin Meadow Pond, but somewhere north east of Littleton. Someone's out there fishing. See him out there in the distance. Lots of little camps. The bike is getting so filthy. <laughs> Lots of little camps. And uh, yeah, she is dirty. Um, this is nice. Let's enjoy it for a second. Well, they're probably, all you hear is wind. Is that better? <sighs> nice. Oh, it's freezing. I'm like, I'm cold. I'm very, very cold. 
Back to it. This part of the hamster ride, Wesson Road, <laughs> if you're not on knobbies, it's really hard. Uh, it may get better over time, but this was just recently graded, and it is slippery, very slippery. A few hundred yards ago, I was running along this road and I saw to my left a runway. <laughs> and I was like, and I was way, way down there on the other side of the trees. I'm like, what the hell? And I passed a little tiny building. It looks like it might be like an old control station or something with a little antenna. But it's not, there's no land use on the TomTom -tom map for a runway. There's no signage. It's all blocked off. I mean, they clearly don't want people to get there. You can see this area here. Um, it's a runway. <laughs> We're somewhere uh, Groden, New Hampshire. Groden? Groden, New Hampshire is where we are. I don't even know where I am, to be honest. I've never, I've never been north of Littleton before in the New Hampshire side. I've been north of Littleton on the Vermont side, but yeah, I have no idea where I am right now. But yeah. So this part here, it runs alongside Stark Highway. There's a mine down here. 
This is definitely a dead end road. I'm not gonna even go up there. I I see on the Tom Tom is a dead end road. So I'm gonna go back down the way I came, past the mine over here, and then get back on Stark Highway and basically meet where this goes. So there's a there's 110 right there. So basically this road going up, this ends, uh, and then the road I'm on now, it only goes to like here and then it stops. There's really no there's really no connection there. So I'm gonna turn around and go back, but maybe I'll give it a go. No, it stops. Although, maybe I'll take it to the next right. We will, we will try this. Actually, we're gonna try it. <laughs> we're gonna try it, but I'm not holding out any hope for this, uh, this working out for us. I'm not going any further, but you can see right down there, there's a fence closed off. So I got to turn around and go back. I figured it was a, a correct dead end. But uh, the GPS track show going forward. Oh well. I turn around, this damn thing's in the puddle. Oh, son of beach. Anyway, we are uh, leaving the ATV trails. I came across this uh, power station. We're leaving the ATV trails, it's getting super gnarly. So we're heading off back towards the main road. I actually missed the exit for, the, uh, for this thing anyway, so I, I'm actually off the track. Of what I wanted to be on. Uh, man, <laughs> the bike is looking gnarly. It is looking real gnarly. Whew. Man, I clean her tonight. All right. Uh, yeah, things are going good though. I'm actually, my concern though, 
is running out of uh, storage on the TomTom Tom Bandit. But other than that, everything else is going good. I sure brought an extra SD card with me. So, this is a blast. I'm having so much fun. I just hope that nothing mechanically breaks down. I hope the tires don't, you know, give out. Um, if that if that goes well, then we are we're good. I'm I'm having a great time today. This is this is amazing. It's only um, it's only 1:30 anyway, so we've got plenty of daylight left to get to where we want to go and then interstate back home. It's our first crash. It's our first crash, guys. I had a feeling hitting right here, this might happen. Right there, it's just super muddy. Now, did the crash bars do their job or did they not? I still have that same corner on the thing there. Yeah. It hit right here too and grabbed a rock. It's probably out of commission, which really sucks. Let's lift it up. It was already on its last leg. Probably it for that thing. I'm gonna turn this guy around first. Let's see if I can just hop on it. Yeah, so, let's assess the damage here. Do the crush boards bend? No. Cylinder head got a bunch of mud in it though. But the crash boards themselves look good. Ton of mud, but yeah. Can I finally see through down here? I mean, finally isn't a bad thing. Uh, TBD, I guess. But 
definitely scratched up. Everything else is fine though, I think. I think we're okay. Skiers are coming, let's get out of here. Well, we don't have cell phone service, but we are out of the park. It's, it appears it's asking me to get on, on uh, Highway 26 for only a few hundred feet and then get right back on their roads. I don't know if it's dirt or not. Um, before I proceed, I'm gonna find out, uh, the bike's handling fine. I just wanna find out how close I am to the Canadian border and figure out how long it would take me to get home from here. I'm just curious. I don't want to spend all day out here. Um, if it's another 75 miles of dirt, I'll probably uh, do half of that. But it is gorgeous out here. It really is. I think that's the end of the ATV park, I think. But look at this, look at this beautiful vista we have here. Would you look at that? <laughs> that is breathtaking. Look at that vista. Well, uh, we're getting pretty high now in the state. Um, I'm probably another hour now, I'm probably about 45 minutes to the very tip of the state if I did main roads. So probably two hours, maybe three hours on dirt. I don't really know what else the hamster has in touch as a store for me right now. I'm okay on timing. The rear shock is feeling really stiff. Like it's feeling like it's, it's not absorbing any of the bumps at all, which is concerning, but nothing to do about it right now. But um, that is a huge bike. And she is doing really, really well, considering the fact that I have uh, just normal stock GS tires. Wow, look at these guys. This is amazing.
guys doing? Good. It's been a, it's a rough road. Oh, it doesn't? I was, uh, let me get my helmet off. One second. Yeah, I got on in Littleton, basically, and kind of went went through there. I started in Littleton. I don't need gas, but basically this road is going to keep going up, and uh, there's no gas stations up there. So I don't need gas now, but I will at some point. This supposedly takes me to a gas station, but it's taking me left as opposed to right. Um, I spoke to some guys back there who were helpful. They told me to go right back there to get gas, but, um, oh, come on. But, uh, look at this, some mosquitoes in here. All right, does it say where we are? I'm gonna use my best judgment and go get gas going left. I don't know. <laughs> I'm basically lost, <laughs> but I can't go back. I found road again. I am so thankful to be out of those woods. I made this short video because I still have a long way to go, but uh, I was really getting worried there because I do not trust the fuel gauge on this bike. We're at 250 miles. It has a range of like 350, but it varies. So I'm just really happy to be back on tarmac. So. Yeah, I did not finish the hamster run and probably the 20 miles or so to the very top, but I just couldn't risk the gas. Now, I have uh, driven 257 miles in the last fill up, and the BMW says I have 210 miles range. That would mean this thing could get 450, 4670 to a tank. So that would mean. It's going to be like 45 miles to the gallon. It also means I only need like 5 gallons. So let's see. So, total fill up was uh, six and a half gallons. So I only have three gallons left, which would mean an average of 40 miles per gallon. Um, 120 miles left instead of 210, according to this thing. Anyway, as usual, it was wrong. But it looks like I could have made it all the way to the border uh, if I wanted to. So we're in uh, uh, Aaron, New Hampshire. Um, get a little snack and then hit the road again try to get home before uh four nine
Well, couldn't be any catastrophic incidents. I'm about to go 93 south, back towards uh, Lebanon, New Hampshire. So I'm about 50, 50 miles from home, 5-0. I didn't do any other videos because there's really nothing exciting. It was just me on boring tarmac. So, um, but I thought this would be my last video of the trip. And uh, bike did really well. She needs a bath badly. <laughs> um, but yeah, she did really well. The time lapse has been amazing. Um, I mean, we're like, just, it went all day, which is amazing. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up from here. Thanks for watching, everyone. I didn't die yet. So, take care.